Now I can. Yeah. So we are ready to go, Jonas. So Great. So should we just should we just start? We can do that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we do have people joining us. So let me tell you. Let me tell you all the objective of this webinar. So there have been there has been uh, so much of discussion regarding the COVID nineteen uh, everywhere across the globe. Uh, all of the India, the one point three billion people are closed down within their homes, and uh, we are also very much curious that how much it is going to go on, and when it should be lifted, and how it should be lifted. In the meantime, we have been uh, from Germany that uh, Germany has been able to manage COVID nineteen very effectively. So the very objective of this webinar is to understand what measures Germany has been able to get in place so that uh, they have been supposedly managed the impact of COVID-19. Right. Yeah. So as a as a citizen of uh, the Germany, of as a common citizen, what uh, experience that you have been going through? It's something that we would like to know. Uh, so, can you just please tell us about uh, when the lockdown has been uh, effectively taken into place in Germany? How many weeks it has been? So, before I comment on the lockdown, let me say one thing. Everything that I'm about to share with you guys is purely my own perspective. I am not a public uh, policy a politician, I am not a virologist, and I have very little knowledge about the circumstances of India as well. So please uh, be gentle with me with regards to any comments that I'm giving that might not be feasible for the Indian state. Um, Definitely. With regards to the lockdown, I believe that we are currently in the fifth week of strong measures um, right. in Germany. But when you say lockdown, and as I've seen in the media, the Indian interpretation of the word lockdown is much different from the German one in the sense that for us, is, is, it is more like a contact ban or um, a, a curfew um, where we are not supposed to go out uh, without reason. We are not supposed to sit down in parks, um, not mu uh, much less with anyone else uh, except ourselves. Um, and we are not supposed to be with people higher, with a higher number than one. Um, that excludes households. So everyone that you're living with in one household is excluded from these measures. With these, you are able to, to walk around freely. Um, but this is much less severe than the measures that we have seen um, in Italy or in France, where you are stopped by the police on the streets and you have to show a paper that indicates with a signature or, or form uh, what your purpose of being outside is. This has not been the case in Germany. Um, here, we are still allowed to be uh, outside with a reason. And as far as I have heard, at least in my city, um, there has not been strong police um, like uh, man mandation or, or ticketing. Uh, so, as uh, whatever you're saying, as we understand from it, that somebody who is living at a, in a home cannot go out from his or her home at all. So that is what is the lockdown means in Germany. They can. They yeah. can go out if they have um, a goal, like a like destination, which uh -huh. is either groceries or work. Um, lockdown is not interpreted as you are not allowed to work, uh, which right. I have heard is uh, the interpretation of lockdown in other countries. So even work is um, prohibited. In here, much of the work situation with regards to home office and things like that 
is mm -hmm. entirely up to the companies themselves. So mm -hmm. they, they can decide. This is not state mandated. Okay, so the factories are running. Well, the ones where the company owners or the company heads decide that the risk is not um, high to have the company still running. And like I said, the, the response from, from companies is very diverse. I have heard mm. that some people are introducing like more shifts <coughs> where only 30% per shift of the company is present or you have alternating responsibilities, then a lot of people are doing home office. And it depends, of course, a lot on the industry, whether that is feasible. So that is very interesting because in India, all of the industries are completely closed down. So there is no industry that has been functional now. Right. Um, and it is, yeah. I guess this, your question also relates to the focus of your organization, which is economic. <laughs> Uh, policies right. have, have economic uh, stimuli so um, the reason for which I think that is possible in Germany is because the epidemic is relatively under control so I'm not saying I'm condoning the strict measures in India without question but I'm I'm supporting this stance if the situation is not managed. And what do I mean by the situation is under control in Germany? Mm. Our ICU, like intensive care unit capacity, ventilators, mm. personnel, mm. hospitals, mm. is mm. very benefiting to the crisis situation. Um, mm. A lot of these things are relatively well in place. What we right, do struggle right. with is, as well as everywhere, is um, like protection gear, uh, like PPE, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. masks, and disinfectants. Um, mm -hmm. And it has happened in here as well in Germany um, that these supplies were stolen from hospitals by patients. Um, is right. Uh, that is like the the strongest outlier that i have heard of there have been some corona parties of young people uh, at the beginning where they said we are not a, a at risk um group so let's just have a party invite one infected and get it over with so these types of irresponsibilities have been taken place taking place in germany as well but in with regards to the measures and the, the testing, um, I think we are quite well off, which also explains why our um, mortality rate has been fairly low. Um, there's an interesting um, graph that I would like to uh, share with you. Um, sure. Can I do that in the chat? I think yes, sir. I think yes, you can do that. Let me try. Kumal, can he do that? Or maybe I... Yes, he can share, share the screen from his uh, own screen. Uh, and yeah. can I just copy the, the graph, the diagram? Because my screen is very full with other things, so I'd rather just send the diagram itself. Yeah, yes, you... it's sure. Not... It's not working right now seems I have to have the file as a different um, like as wow. a file on on my PC and cannot have it inside a document give me one second I am saving it out please take your time no problem at all file and desktop Is something arriving? Oh, it's so sad that they just don't open this file. Now everyone has to download it. That's not ideal. Um, yeah.
so maybe uh, you can also send it on the chat so that uh, komal may help you to share it on the screen it seems to not allow me to send it in the chat not as a file okay. so i i've tried that with copy and paste but So can you email it? So email can. Oh, it, I I did send it in the chat, but you now have to download it. Each one of you, um, okay. which is not ideal. Yeah. <laughs> because now everyone. Uh, let me think. Maybe we can do the screen sharing, and I just. Uh, yeah. Like. Is it possible, Kumal, to just share one of my screens? I have two monitors. Um, do you know? Kumal? Yes. Uh, do you know whether it's possible to share just one monitor? Or do yeah. I have to share my entire uh, two screens? No, only one monitor you can share. Whatever you want to share, you can share it uh, using this share screen option on the taskbar right. downside. I see. Yeah. All right. Are you seeing this? Yeah, yes. we can see it now. Right? Yes. Yeah. So this, there is this one author that I would highly recommend to everyone who has time, which is most most of you. Uh, and uh, an interest in understanding the, the backgrounds of the entire factors, which is a guy called Thomas Pueyo, as you can see down here. He has written three 20 minutes long articles on Medium, which I can share with you in the chat later on as well. Um, I really sure. can, most of the knowledge that I do have about the situation okay. comes from his, ver from his very in-depth analyses. And so what mm -hmm. he's looking at right here is now the share of positive tests um, mm. of all the tests that have been done, which I think is a very interesting figure to look at because it shows you at what stage of pressure these tests have been employed. Because mm -hmm. if the struggle of your system, like your, analysis, uh, like your diagno diagnostical um, environment in your country is under a lot of stress, of course, you are only testing the people with very severe symptoms. Right. If you have a lot of tests available and have a lot of diagnostic capacity, you can also test those people that you only think might be um, infected, which of course uh, then lifts the pressure for okay. the entire system because then you can have the people that are pre-symptomatic or with mild cases, have them self-isolate so that they do not infect more people. Okay. And I think, as you can see right here, Germany is in the, the, like the, the bottom fifth. So that means that they had a lot of chances to test people which were not positive, which means that the capacity of tests was relatively high um, in, in relation to, to the entire number of, of uh, people that were infected indeed. Um, and that, I would also say, is the reason for which we can uh, have such low mortality rates, because the higher you're testing, the, the better is your grasp on where the epidemic will lead you. Hmm. Right? Sandeep, are you still there? Question, we were hooking from my line. We just, yeah, we just uh, I'm there. I'm had a small um, delay. I'm here now. I can hear right. you. So we are still uh, so much uh, behind in terms of testing in India. So as of now, we have been identifying some pockets, uh, some areas where the numbers are high and the testing is going to be uh, uh, escalate. Yeah, it's going to be uh, used in high terms in those particular pockets like Delhi and Mumbai. 
right but there have been issues of availability of testing kits uh, so was there any issue like this uh, in germany uh, regarding availability of testing kits and how um, do we how manage it i think the the availability of testing kits was not as severe as in under, uh, other countries because our pharmaceutical industry that is supplying these tests um, was able to to provide these as far as I know. Um, mm. Another thing that was beneficial to us is the fact that this test was developed in Germany. Um, it was developed at the Charité in Berlin. So the person mm -hmm. who, who has a lot of presumably a lot of insight into how this test works and and what the reliability is um, is in our country which is also okay. another thing that i think helped a lot um, to get the public opinion um, in front of things is that this particular biologist um, started a podcast with one of our local radio um, organizations where he gave an update for half an hour every workday. So people had the chance to really listen to one person who knows a lot and has a lot of credibility uh, explain the risks and the, the virus behavior basically. Um, yeah. and, and of course, he's a scientist, which also means that he has neither a political objective, nor is he like a sweet talker. He, mm -hmm. he has been a very um, straight straightforward, talk. very fact-oriented, and has generated a little, a little bit of a fan following in Germany. It's, it's quite peculiar. Actually, is, uh, does he is, uh, represents the government or he works autonomously? Um, he works at at a hospital, a university hospital, which is called the Charité. Um, okay. And so it is like public private partnership, I would say. There's close ties to the government and, and he, of course, like helps them. But I think he's relatively independent. Uh, my next question is about the communication that the government and the agencies that have been having with the people. So I right. think uh, it, it is an important aspect in the times like these where you get the right information at right time. So which and what are the agencies that have been uh, giving this sort of information to the people using which media and uh, uh, how people are responding to it? So I think this podcast that I mentioned, which was called the Coronavirus Update, was certainly one tool that has been very widely adopted by the um, academic uh, population in Germany, as far as I know. Um, with regards to other strata of, of the population, I think television is still the go-to um, medium with regards to, to informing the public. Um, so there's uh, our daily news uh, that has been uh, very adamant on, on giving, um, commenting on the issue, certainly. Um, and the institution that is uh, in charge of doing that is the Robert Koch Institute, um, mm -hmm. which are the ones that are managing infectious disease. And the person who is in charge there is a certain Robert Wieler. Um, and he is a scientist as well, and he has been very, um, like, he has received a lot of acclaim for being uh, calm in, uh, in the uh, entire situation and giving uh, good press conferences. Mm -hmm. And uh, how often the political leadership in the country has been interacting with the people? So at the beginning, it was mainly the state ministers. Um, so it was the, the federal ministers, the, the leaders of the federal states that, ha that have been very vocal on the issue, most prominently our, the, the minister of Bavaria and also our health minister, 
who in the beginning uh, was gaining a lot of traction from being uh, very stern about the situation and, and asking for, uh, for strong measures by the people uh, quite soon. Um, one thing that has been criticized a lot is um, an unclear um, stance on uh, masks for the public. You know, protective gear is usually meant for healthcare professionals um, in hospitals. And the, the scarce situation makes this much more important uh, that there's enough supplies for healthcare workers. Um, so there have been, due to other countries adopting these measures and, and mandating the use of um, masks in public, um, a lot of people from inside Germany have been demanding the measures to be widened towards masks as well. Um, mm -hmm. And th there's no clear stance on that yet, because one thing is clear, these textile masks or mouth masks, not the, um, what's it called, I think N91 is like the professional, 95, uh, 95 is the pro professional mask. Um, this right. is not uh, available for the people, but the textile masks are supposed to be only protecting others from yourself. Um, so it's, it's an, certainly uh, an issue that's still open for debate. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, how about the press, uh, the liberty of the press? Has it been curtailed down to some extent? And they have, uh, have they been asked to provide any positive news? Only positive news, something like that? Has it, is, that been, is that been going on in Germany? Are they not reporting? that I know of, no. Um, certainly not the public media. Um, as far as I know, there's... Uh, still quite some open debate on these issues. There is uh, more right-leaning newspapers, for instance, um, and I mean center-right, not nationalist, um, mm -hmm. that are saying that we should lift uh, the measurements very soon because otherwise the damage from the measures um, might be higher than the damages uh, from the, the virus. Um, and I mean, one thing is also quite clear that the economic damages, especially for people that are working, um, like that are self-employed, are very severe, but Germany has been very quick in setting up programs to so support these people, um, mm -hmm. like artists as well, and self-employed uh, people like entrepreneurs, startups, uh, all of these groups that are most affected by these measure, um, measures have been um, supposedly supported. Right. So actually I was, uh, I'll be coming at the economic measures at the, at the last part of the chat. Before that, I would like to ask regarding the press and the social media. So uh, are there any instances of curbing the social media? Are there instances of fake news that has been going on? Fake news is an interesting issue. So mm -hmm. yes, there have been a lot of fake news in the German speaking realm. Um, like most notably, I think it was one doctor, which is part of uh, the board of Transparency International. Um, mm -hmm. So it is someone who is supposedly <coughs> having high acclaim and is being credible, right? Um, mm -hmm. And he was saying that uh, this virus is no different from other coronaviruses. Um, mm -hmm. And there is already a herd immunity in the state and the, the measures are way too severe, uh, which is all very easily refuted when you look at the origin story of this virus, which is this Chinese market and which is uh, bats which were held for consumption, if I'm not um, uh, badly uh, informed, which means that this coronavirus does um, have some biological 
similarities with other coronaviruses, but is novel. Um, so the, the illness of COVID-19, which springs from this uh, SARS-2 2019N, or uh, don't quote me on that, uh, is certainly not related to other coronaviruses. Other fake news were that the test is not adequate, um, that it shows uh, all other coronaviruses as well, so it is not precise, which can also be refuted by looking into the academic literature on the issue. Um, and one thing which has been like really on the fringes of conspiracies was that uh, this virus was manufactured uh, in laboratories in China uh, mm. to bring biological warfare um, mm. to uh, Europe or right. other countries. So that's okay. on the topic of fake news. With regards to curtailing um, like public social media, like Twitter mm. or Facebook, I have not heard anyone being censored mm. in that fashion. At the beginning, there was a small issue with uh, reposting on Facebook of certain articles, but this was employed by Facebook themselves, where they mm -hmm. would automatically um, police any uh, media on COVID-19 at the beginning to then have a manual revision whether these articles were spreading false information. I don't know about I don't know much about Germany, but uh, there have been instances of various superstitions percolating within the society, emerging out of the society in various parts of India uh, due to the extreme fear of this uh, particular pandemic. So, uh, how is the morale of the general public over there? And are there any uh, instances of certain uh, superstitions regarding uh, this pandemic or due to this pandemic emerging out of the situation? I, uh, when you say superstition, you probably uh, mean religious superstitions also, right? Religious or various kinds of superstitions regarding the disease that uh, if you can try this out, it would cure the COVID-19. Oh, no, they... not, not in that direction. <laughs> I, I did hear um, uh, something about the U.S. that mm -hmm. this... Um, what were the hydro uh, chloroquine yeah that chloroquine. this hydroxychloroquine that this was found in uh, mm. certain products for cleaning and that people did drink it because they thought it would make them more immune um but in germany the the most peculiar thing that would fall in that category that i did hear was that um people thought that by having the flu already that they would be less um like less vulnerable towards COVID 19. this is one uh which is relatively absurd and the other one which came from the russian orthodox churches here in germany they publicly said um that they think COVID 19 is a punishment from god for yeah. Uh, LGBTQ uh, <laughs> policies in Germany or uh, other lax uh, policies against minorities. Um, but this did not, they do not have a great following here in Germany anyway, yeah. so it did not have great waves. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh about the social media again so what kind of discussions are people into right now if you go to twitter or facebook what they are discussing about mostly um some people are discussing a lot about masks mm -hmm. um like i mentioned before whether masks are a valid measure or not whether we should all wear them whether they should be uh, kept mm -hmm. for um for other people um yeah. then there's a lot of people that discuss about whether we should just restrict the measures to high-risk groups so that mm -hmm. everyone else can continue yeah. um these are suggestions but usually the backlash from 
like the the greater number of people seems to be supporting the government measures at this right. stage uh, that at least that's my feeling that certain the morale is still quite high and people are generally still in favor of um, mm -hmm. continuing with the measures because we are seeing what happened in Italy, the US, Spain, France. And these are mm -hmm. all very uh, severe stories which we have been able to, to circumvent thus far. Um, yeah. So people are, are scared, people are careful, um, and the morale is still fine. Yeah. Anything else and, from Twitter uh, that uh, I can think of? They... No, let's continue. Yeah. Are there any issues of uh, conflicts, some sort of conflicts within the communities or some tensions within the various sections of societies or some rotten issues of the past that have been emerging out of, due to this particular condition, some political elements that have been taking benefit of it? Are um, there any instances reported? There's not many that I know of that have a high intensity. One thing that you could um, bring up under this framing is that our far right um, mm -hmm. party, which is called the AFD, um, mm -hmm. uh, they have claimed that the COVID spreading can be traced back mostly to refugees. Right. from the Middle East and Arab countries, which uh -huh. is not based <laughs> in facts at all, because yeah. the, the first people that were bringing um, COVID-19 to Germany <coughs> was uh, a Chinese worker for a automobile supplies company um, in Bavaria. And the second group was a lot of people that were in Ischgl in Austria. Yeah in the ski resort, um, mm -hmm. which right. was people between uh, 30 and 50 that were then yeah. doing a carnival uh, festivity yeah. uh, afterwards with 300 people uh, in, in yeah. the city of Heinsberg. But this has nothing to do with refugees. So like I said, this claim is absolutely absurd. Right. Uh, in India, especially, and various other parts, so now I'm moving towards the, some questions related to economy. Uh, there was a discussion that we should be uh, managing the pandemic first, and then after that, we should move on to the economic uh, consequences of it, and how to manage those consequences. Now, there has been various uh, discussions, debates that has been going on a particular uh, portals, particular platforms uh, regarding the reviving of the economy so is it been the same is it the same is has it been the same case with germany that you haven't started about uh, discussing about the economy recently or uh, were the government and various other stakeholders have been discussing the economic uh, consequences economic aspects of the pandemic from the very beginning that depends a little whether we are talking about um you know, saving umbrellas or financing and offsetting the damages to the economy, or whether we are talking about lifting the measures. The first right. one has been there right from the start. Uh, since the, me like the, the, the impacts for the economy were quite severe right from the get-go, um, and we were having strong measures, relatively, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, compared to the US at least, uh, not so far yeah. compared to, to France. Um, I would say that uh, the, the, like the um, financial support was quite uh, quick and quite soon, um, which, which is a development of recent um, days is the lifting of the measures, that economic voices are asking for these uh, measures to be lifted, so that the economy can get back to work. And usually the response mm -hmm. from the political voices or political departments from the realm is, uh, we have not yet enough data. Uh, what we should first 
employ is uh, contact tracing apps. Um, I'm not sure whether you are aware that many of the countries that have been very successful in managing the pandemic, such as Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan, um, have been that successful mostly because they had apps that were able to track whether you had been in contact with someone that afterwards turned um, uh, corona positive, COVID positive. Um, and this is something which is now discussed on the European level um, under high um, regard of privacy as well. So the European Union is currently developing an app that supposedly communicates via Bluetooth and does not send um, personal information uh, so you can be informed of being at risk because you met someone that then was COVID po positive without anyone accessing your personal data. Mm -hmm. uh, a few more questions about economy and now uh, most of the countries have announced stimulus packages uh, within a few days of the pandemic. Yeah. For example, US has announced around 10-15% uh, of their, their GDP uh, in the very first week of the, the pandemic. Uh, and there has been some criticism about countries like India that uh, the stimuli is not being enough and uh, there has been uh, there have been forces uh, pressures been working on the government that they should announce more more of the packages to revive the economy so what about what is your experience with germany uh, how much uh, stimulus packages package germany has announced or has they, has they announced i am not aware about Yes, uh, as I said before, um, the, the announcement was quite soon. Um, mm -hmm. The stimulus package was, uh, I don't want to say the wrong number now, uh, but I think it was around 5 billion euro. right. um, euros. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, for, like I said earlier, entrepreneurs, startups, um, self-employed people, um, okay. and also companies, uh, okay. which like smaller companies mainly. Um, okay. Right. Um, let me share with you another interesting uh, thing sure. uh, in the chat, which comments on the app, which is a small comic that explains uh, how the contract tracing works. Just for later. Yeah, yeah, I will have a check out. So uh, now, uh, what we can understand, uh, you know, having one of the objectives of having such this discussion was to, the have is there has been phases of Germany and there has been. Uh, uh, things of uh, claiming German model and why don't you implement German model and, and how you should implement German model. So that kind of discussions have been going on within the Indian diaspora. But at the same time, we do understand that these two countries are, are no aware uh, similar uh, to each other. Uh, in terms of geography, Maharashtra is perhaps Mara, the state of Maharashtra. Uh, Germany is uh, uh, as is uh, around state of Maharashtra in terms of geography. The population we have huge population. Now Germany is 80 million, I believe, whereas uh, India is 1.3 what million? Yeah, India is 1.3 billion. So there would be issues of testing. Uh, there would be issues uh, of having the stimuli packages, and there'll be discussions of uh, if it is enough or not. So on that backdrop, background, how much the German citizen is worried about the economic future of the country and uh, what has been the news reportage uh, regarding how it could go further, how much GDP drop Germany may experience and how much employment losses would be there? Are there any discussions regarding this? I have not been exposed to a lot of discussions of this yet. Mm -hmm. Um, I think because of the quick 
response of the German government and our financial minister saying uh, we our pockets are deep basically he says this is the situation where the our austerity policy of the previous right. decades will come in handy we are yeah. willing to give out um, stimuli indefinitely, uh, like infinitely. This right. uh, and this is almost a direct <laughs> quote. So, uh, I think due to these signals from uh, the political sphere, I think people are still relatively calm. But uh, please factor into this statement that. I am not in contact with a lot of small business owners. I have mm -hmm. not a lot 